Okay, so let's move on with our chord progression. Now it's worth noting that these sort of steps I'm giving you, these kind of kind of like basic rules really that you want to look out for and do note that you know, you don't have to follow the rules. The rules are there to be broken or ignored altogether. But if you're beginning, uh, you know, you're just starting out with music theory, then these guidelines are really going to help you get much better results than just sort of randomly fiddling around. It's much better to understand the process and then break the rules rather than just sort of go at it willy nilly and just, you know, try and make stuff work. It's not going to work that way. Just follow the rules to start off with and then you can obviously experiment with that once you got used to them. So let's go into our chord progression. Now these notes in here I'm going to use as a reference so I just want to mute all of these just to get going because I just want to use them as reference and I'm going to highlight them all and I'm just going to literally hold shift and hit the up arrow just to move them up a whole octave. In fact let's move them up two octaves just to get them right out of the way and I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we've got a bit more room. And so step four, as I mentioned, right, the first thing is the sort of chord positions within your progression. So the first guideline is pretty obvious, and that is that your first chord should really begin with the one chord, the chord that starts with the tonic of your scale. OK, so I'm just going to select that here and I'm going to hold Alt or Option and then just drag it down. Obviously, let's unmute that as well. So this is going to be the first chord in our progression. Like I say, you know, these rules are to be broken, but 99% of the time when you hear a chord progression, it's going to start with the one chord. Okay, so the second sort of guideline, if you like, is that the chord progression should end usually in a four or a five chord. So let's count that out. So it's one, two, three, four or five. So in this case, it's either of these two chords. And the reason for that is being that these are sort of known as resolution chords. So when you resolve from one of these chords back to the one chord, it's got a much more sort of harmonically complete feeling behind it. It'll make much more sense to the ear when or resolve properly. You get a sense of completion out of it, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So we're going to pick the four chord as our last chord. So let's just move that down and we go G sharp. That's our four chord. Let's unmute that as well. Okay, so those are really the two sort of main guides. That is starting with the one chord and resolving or having the last chord in your progression as either the four or five chord. And you're basically free to use any other chords in between those to sort of make the chord progression happen. Now you'll finding you'll find that depending on the scale, uh, some chords tend to work better than others. A good example of this would be sort of the diminished chords not all of them, but most scales have uh, one diminished chord within them. Now, I'm not going to go into the theory here of why that is. It's not really super important. All you need to know is that the in the Dorian scale, the diminished chord is the sixth chord. OK, it's this one here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. It's the sixth chord. In the sort of normal minor scale, it's always the two chord. And in the major scale, it's the seven chord. Now, as mentioned, you can use it, but it's sort of it's not the easiest chord to get to work in your progression. So generally speaking, you're going to be ignoring that chord. So let's draw in my chord progression. So so I'm going to go in this chord progression. I'm going to go from a one chord to a seven chord. But the seven chord is going to be below is in down one. Which sounds quite nice. And then we're going to go up to a two chord. So that's our two chord there. And I'm going to go to a three chord. And I'm going to sort of have a slight repeat of my chord. So I'm just going to copy the first two, so the one chord and the seven chord. And then let's go up and try a five chords so one two three four five and we've got a sharp okay so let's stick that in unmute it Uh, 
Okay, so that sounds pretty good. I'm liking that chord progression. Obviously, it sounds pretty sort of lame at the moment with that sound, that particular sound that's playing. Um, but obviously, we're going to start changing that. We're going to do that in the next lesson where we actually start looking at the pad synthesis. Now, there's one little thing that I want to do first, and that's just make this slightly more interesting than it just playing uh, very standard sort of triads. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the middle note. So I'm going to hold shift while I'm doing this and select the middle note of every single chord and then I'm going to hold shift and hit the up key and that just sort of opens up the chord a bit. It's playing exactly the same chord because it's using all the same notes but it's playing basically like a different inversion of it is cool. And like I say, it just sort of opens up the chord. Now, it's the wrong sound playing at the moment. It's just a horrible sort of screechy uh, standard preset that comes with Retrolog. But that's fine. We're going to put a pad on that in the next lesson. So that's it for the free lessons of this course. If you want to continue to make this track, learning the ins and outs of Cubase and learning all the tools and music production techniques you need to make your own tracks, then head on over to Born to Produce and check it out. Still to come in this tutorial is programming the bass line, making the rolling bass sound using synthesis and retrolog, arranging the track, in-depth mixing and mastering, adding effects, downloading some great free plugins, processing the vocals plus way more stuff it's a super great course and super value for money considering how much knowledge and experience you'll gain from it of course no hard feelings if not but please do us a solid and like the video subscribe and hit the alert button for tons more free music production videos to come thank you for watching